Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you my daily focus chests. I have 11 diamond. And this is on my Infidel1258 account. I'm going to open them and I want to do a deeper dive on analysis of the rewards. If it's just potions or if it's just DC, that's going to be, you know, that'll be a quick, quick video. But if there's some cards here, we'll just try and get into it, like specifically on each of them, whether I like them, what I, why I like them, what I'm expecting in the future from a price appreciation standpoint and uh, just a bit more a bit more analysis on each so let's get into it okay first off so pelicor deceiver great card um what are, they're like going for like a penny i think right now right let's see buy yeah less than a penny i mean i feel like in the last i feel like in the last mm, six months of this game People never would have really thought less than a penny monsters was possible. In October or November of 2021, I remember, you know, cards being, certain cards being several dollars. Wavemaster, um, or Wavesmith, he's called. The Wavesmith, Venari Wavesmith. Um, and, and I just feel like we we were convinced we were so certain that cards would never be this cheap again um but this is like the this is where the cards used to be in kind of the lull of splinter lands before the excitement and the fomo really and i just wonder if maybe this is indicative of a stability that we can expect for perhaps a while before we see another wave upward and you might say i don't believe there's going to be another wave upward Okay, I disagree. We'll see. I'll be here uh, one way or another, expectantly waiting on that. And either you'll be long for that journey or you won't, but that's fine. But yeah, I mean, I really think this is a solid card. And I do think this price point to me is, I'm not saying it's a bottom. I'm not, I have no idea. Um, you know, over the next, over the next six months to a year, I think we reach a place where we find a total stability in the marketplace. And this is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it'll allow accumulation. Two, it actually is a great time to do flipping. When when prices are stable, it's a great time to flip cards for profit. Whereas now, or in the last few months when things were so volatile, it's actually tricky to flip. You might buy a card one day thinking it's quote unquote a good price that you can then flip for more and the, the market, the bottom falls out on you and suddenly you're left holding a bag. So I like that this price is where it is. Um, I think it's gonna, it might be indicating like a historic bottom for, for common cards. Also, Pelicor Deceiver is excellent and I really like it, especially at the highest levels with Retaliate. Retaliate is so nasty and it's got a great amount of hit points. Even at bronze, like eight hit points is very significant for five mana. I don't, I mean, it's doing very next to nothing. I mean, it's really just a meat shield, but the flying is nice because of the earthquake. The, the speed is decent. Uh, the damage is almost irrelevant, but the hit points are meaningful for five mana. And then as you get into silver, uh, going up to two melee and 10 hit points, that's a pretty beefy card, 10 hit points. And then uh, gold, and, uh, gold and diamond, the abilities start to go pretty serious because of that speed, that backfire. And of course, the manipulation you can add in terms of support, uh, swiftness, slowing your enemy, blind, etc., retaliate is so so powerful 50 percent return attack um every time you're struck by melee love it so i mean this is a card i have many 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 copies of and i'm super happy to hold them for the longest time and there you go that's nice hopefully we see some golds or legendaries i haven't had any in a while like i don't know that i've had a i don't know that i've had a legendary in like mm, a week or so i probably had one during my Season rewards, but I no, I don't think I did because last season I only had twenty seven loot chests from my from my from my season rewards. Venari Heatsmith, this is another card that's pretty pretty well dirt cheap. Look there, like like almost I guess the exact same price, and and it looks like that the price has gone up, so the price was even lower. Um, you can see it's been up four hundred percent. So like somebody had listed even cheaper. Like this is. This is really, really crazy. Like this is a functional, uh, look at this. Um, so you're at level seven. So you're getting three armor, 
four hit points. So you got seven hit points, and this is void armor. So it's literally, it's seven hit points, regardless of whether you're struck with magic or archery or um, melee. In fact, it's better than that because the armor will stop even a hit of, unless there's piercing, the armor will stop a high impact shot. So you're, t you're talking seven, and I would say practically more like 10 hit points, practically because again, unless they have piercing, they're going to stop once they break that armor. It's got good speed, so it's going to dodge. Sometimes it's got the Amplify, which is so important. If you're playing in gold or better, this $1.30 card is ridiculously affordable and important, in my opinion. I mean, I think I'm going to have to buy this. I mean, it's just so ridiculously cheap. Yeah. I mean, what is that? 10 bucks? And I, I put $200 worth of credits in the other day because I want to stop buying, paying my DEC. That's the other thing I want to mention to you guys. If you're holding DEC right now and you're thinking, oh man, these cards are so affordable and you want to keep investing in what you're doing in Splinterlands, growing your deck and, and you know acquiring more of these cards for long-term hold or rent or whatever, great. But I don't think, you know, I spent about 400,000 DEC in the last few days um on cards and i don't regret buying those cards but i do regret having purchased them with dc because the dc market is so low why not you know i believe in the game i haven't invested anything financially in months and i used to do like a 200 dollars average every month so i just took 200 dollars fresh cash and bought credits using splinterlands going into the credit window you just go the plus sign and then you can deposit using paypal or crypto or whatever i use paypal and I've got $200 to, worth of credits to go and do some shopping with when I see a ridiculously cheap card like that. I think this is a great little meat shield. It works in low mana matches. It's it's an amazing snipe protector. Um, it's also got the Amplify, which is so powerful in my opinion. Amplify is one of the most important abilities in the modern meta, in my opinion. I've, I use it effectively all the time, and I love it. Like in With Fire, it works so well with Thorns, but there's some Magic Reflect, and I find with Magic Reflect... That's where Amplify really shines, but on the fire team, it's more of a thorns um, benefit because there's just a lot of thorns monsters there. Um, but Amplify is so good, and this is such an affordable card, and we know land is coming and cheap cards are going to be needed to farm that stuff. This is just, in my opinion, holy cow cheap. Like, And this is a card that, think through... What would it take for this card to be 10 cents? I mean, for this card to be 10 cents, I think all it needs to happen is it needs to no longer be in circulation. It's it's from my perspective, it's probably that easy. Now, not just the day it goes out of circulation will it pump, but it's like after it goes out of circulation, every day you're no longer seeing new copies pump into the marketplace. That is like a, over weeks and months, probably six months thereafter, you start to see a I would expect a price a significant price increase because there's a complete dry up of new supply, and yet there's a continuing amount of demand. Even if that demand is kind of what you might imagine is trivial trivial demand chips away at um pre-existing supply to the point where you start to see a price increase so you know maybe that's years away because we're probably a year away from these cards running out right i think or at least months away and then i'm saying another six months on top of that the heat smith is currently at 65 percent print rate so it's probably you know six months away from print completion and then another six months away from you know, the slow uptick of prices due to market um, just gobbling up the remainder that are out there. So, I mean, I'm happy to buy, as you can see, just another 10 bucks on, on probably a thousand copies of that thing. Potions or whatever. That's nice, actually. Pretty decent amount of little DC. Another Deceiver. I like the art on this card, too. That's the thing I didn't mention. I love the black, the like black purple. I love the like like dark light uh frame on the on the on the um wings it's almost like yeah like a like a dark light not a natural like healthy beautiful bright warm light but it's like a cool purple um somehow cold light it's 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 a good design very cool the vampire bat i think this is one that people are sleeping on also and now again reward cards are re what they you know reward cards are what they are like they are being pumped into circulation everybody sleeps on it because you're getting it for free it feels 
trivial, un inconsequential until such time that they stop printing. But I, the other day I was featuring this one, looking at it, and I was thinking, I don't know, man. I'm not sure about this one, but I have to tell you that it reminds me a lot of the Cocatrice. And the Cocatrice is a very powerful monster that gets a lot of victories in certain contexts. The Cocatrice, it has high speed, goes up to six speed at the highest levels. It has um, very small hit points. It has very small melee attack. It has dodge and flight. And look at the vampire bat flying and dodge five speed so it's actually a bit slower but it has way better damage three as opposed to two and it has six hit points instead of four so at the diamond level this seems like a really great contributor from a from a for a lot for an earthquake rule set for a, a little league rule set for a melee from any position rule set for um Maybe even an equalizer and put it in the, in the sneak attack position and just let it be part of your dodge defense. Um, you know, and for three mana and for this price, really, really affordable. And it starts to get good, I would argue. This is probably pretty dang evasive, I would I would imagine, at the silver level. Like you're doing two damage. You got Sure, you only got four hit points, but you got four speed. There's a lot of monsters that are one or two speed uh, at that level, plus the flying. So I think... If you're doing four speed and your attacker's doing two, two speed, that's a 20% dodge chance. The flying's another 25% dodge chance. That's a 45% dodge chance at silver. I, I imagine that's pretty. That's gonna that's gonna turn some tides for you. But then as you get into gold and you add that dodge, that's another I think 25%. So, I mean that's where things really heat up. I'm gonna buy these ones. Just the just these little ones. And then let's keep going. Okay, a little bit of DEC. Potion. Bloodmaker's a card I don't have maxed out yet. I don't I don't own a, a Yoden. I'm rent I've rented one from time to time here. But I don't own one, and therefore, I don't know. I just I haven't rushed out with this one. Let's ha let's have a peek at it and just look at some of the abilities. I mean, it's certainly cheap enough. One penny is I mean these are these are scarce resources. These are cards that are limited in number and always reducing in number because of how they they're burnt in order to consolidate and grow in 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 level and ability. And with that in mind, I just don't know how one penny makes any sense. And so, why ever sell it for a penny? Like what what is what is Nguyen getting? You know, out of this sale. I mean, I would argue 16 DC is so inconsequential that you might as well just hold the card. Now, maybe this is like part of a bot account and he's just doing, he gets them like S101 is probably a bot and they just auto sell them or whatever. I don't know. I just don't get it, guys. I don't understand the value in, unless you're running a bot farm and you've got millions and millions of these cards or thousands and thousands of these cards. And, you know, I just don't see, I think, hold it, hold it and wait, be patient. But as we look at the abilities, I mean, two archery out of the gate is pretty, pretty amazing, actually. You know, that's that's not that's not always the case. And three speed too. It's not it's not even a slow monster um, at the beginning. So I would argue that they're very strong one BCX. But the scatter shot is nice. And if you if you did have a partner with like a, a prince, or, or I guess it wouldn't be prince Rand, just a Yoden, you know, then it's suddenly three archery, and you get the blast damage with the scatter shot, which I would argue is very a nice combo scatter shot with with blast. Gets faster quite quickly. Goes up to three archery within the silver. Still has a really low hit point pool, even at the highest levels. The cripple kicks in there. I wonder if if you use this with Yoden and it hits in the middle of their 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 army and the cripple lands, does it affect all three monsters? Or is it just the main target? I think it might be the main target. If you guys know, drop a comment below. I actually want to know the answer to that. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, it's good. I like it, but I wouldn't personally play it very often because I, when I play fire, I don't use Yoden and therefore I don't often focus in on an archery play. I often focus in on melee or, or even magic. And therefore this card, though interesting and a very great, a reasonable price, I'm not typically acquiring it. Although this is just, again, two bucks, like three dollars for a max level card i mean this is the thing like i 
I, I just made an argument why like I don't really care about the card, but it's just so cheap. And maybe it gets cheaper. I don't really care. I don't care at all because I think at some point every card in this game, once it's out of circulation, appreciates in price significantly from like 10 to 100x. That's my that's my long term viewpoint on this game because I come to that conversation and that and that opinion based on one, this game is fun and two, it has a future. If you disagree with that, that thesis, then I think you should disagree with my hypothesis about the prices, um, you know, 10 xing to 100 xing. Okay, another blood maker. Okay, guys, so I'm going to leave it there. If you enjoy this kind of longer and detailed breakdown of rewards, make sure you drop a comment below letting me know because this is something new. I don't usually do this. When I do my reward videos, I often am just in and out. But I do think this has merit and value because as both prices change over time as well as the card print rates um, grow, uh, they 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 reach their maximum and their circulation and, and there there's important conversations that probably need to happen where we start to talk about wow it's almost out of circulation now it's not yet but when we get there having that conversation might make a lot of sense so if you like this let me know guys have an amazing day god bless